and today's Tuesday, which means another video, and today I'm going to be giving you my Christian testimony, so hope you enjoy. Hey, what's up guys? It's Velvet, and today I'm going to be giving you my Christian testimony from the Broad Bay Cove in Virginia Beach, um, in First Landing State Park. So. I'm having a hard time focusing on both me and the water behind me. Let's see, here's the water. And then I'm super dark, so, well, we can try that. Um, I'm also, like, in a cypress tree right now, which is kind of cool. Well, I'm not in it, like, I'm on the ground, but, um, those are the branches that you see all around me. But anyway, um, this video's been something that I probably should have started my channel with three months ago before I made other videos, so I was introducing people into what kind of videos they would be expecting me to produce, but that's alright, better late than never. So anyway, a lot of you have probably been wondering what happened to me, um, why all of a sudden I'm talking about Jesus and living a Christian lifestyle when a lot of you may know me as um, the girl who likes to party or the stoner or um, sorted other things. So. Anyway, I'm just here to give you the story, and um, I guess I'll start, and I'll keep it short. Um, I don't want to keep you guys here all night, or whatever time you're watching this, but um, my family was Christian. I grew up in a Christian home. We called ourselves Christian, and I went to Christian school on and off. Um, I went to church most Sundays when I was younger, um, until I was 11, and then I mostly con continued to go to church on my own. And I got really involved in a youth group um, between years 11 and 14. I mean, I guess it was more like 11 and 17, but I was less active in the youth group in high school. Um, but that youth group was so important in uh, my foundation, establishing my identity, and uh, just introducing me into the Christian culture. And so um, I started to get into drugs when I was 15. I started to smoke pot, and my family was having a lot of issues at that time. And, um, you know, we, we seemed like we were well off, had a lot of money, and I was doing well in school, and I, you know, looked pretty good on the outside. But once things started falling apart in my family, I started deteriorating on the inside, and it wasn't long after that before my outside appearance was that of... Um, someone who did drugs, I guess. Um, I was wearing lots of pinky clothes. I was in that, that whole culture, that partying culture. And, um, and my mindset just started to change. I started to lose my morals. I started to doubt the existence of God. And um, it was when I was 18. I was working as a lifeguard. And uh, one of my favorite lap swimmers who would always talk to me when he was lap swimming, usually he talked more than he swam, actually. He came and just hang out at the end of the pool, and we would talk. And he asked me if I was a Christian, if I went to church, and if I believed in God. And I said, I remember so clearly, I said, um, I'm more of a spiritual person. I wouldn't call myself a Christian. And and that was, you know, that was when I was most separate from God. That's when I had been doing drugs for years, and just a lot was going on in my family. It was really, really hard. And um, my parents got a divorce, and well, at that point, they weren't divorced yet. Um, but we had just been going through all these legal battles, and I had started college. I didn't know what I wanted to do right out of high school. Like, I was just going through the motions, and because I was lost and doing so many drugs, um, I just, uh, I wasn't in a good, very good place. I had a really shaky foundation when I was going into college, and I was really blinded by drugs, and I had all the wrong ambitions. You know, God wasn't, um, at the forefront of my life. And I was more concerned with weight loss at that point. Actually, when I was in my senior year of high school is when I uh, started looking into weight loss for the first time. And I found sparkpeople.com and I started counting all my calories. And I pretty much stopped eating like January 2010. And I lost like 25 pounds in a month. And everybody was telling me how great I looked. And at that point, you know, my body image and like being skinny was... Um, what my biggest desire was and um, I was dating somebody at the time my longest standing relationship uh, my first love and 
we weren't uh, living, we weren't, we weren't in a godly relationship. Actually, none of my relationships in the past have been godly ones. Um, there wasn't, I wasn't living by the Bible, so, um, you know, I sort of, we all have a moral compass inside of us that points us towards sexual morality, but if we don't have a greater power, aka God, holding us accountable, um, then there's nothing stopping us from having sex before marriage and um, just being really selfish in a relationship, not uh, serving the other person above oneself. And so, anyway, I was in that relationship uh, with my boyfriend at the time. I was in my relationship with food at the time, just um, and my body, just treating them as idols. And things got really hard for me in college, and I uh, developed an eating disorder, and I was having a really hard time trying to maintain uh, being a certain size when I was like hardly eating anything. And um, I was still excelling in my classes, but like my life was so hard. And um, I just remember not being very happy and always chasing the wrong relationships. I was chasing guys. I was going to the gym for like an hour and a half every day, trying to burn a certain number of calories. Um, I was working part-time on top of doing school full-time, and I was serving on different club, club boards, and my life was just kind of a mess. I wasn't taking time to rest. Um, I wasn't going to church. I stopped going to church in college, and I was still partying. So basically, I was just living in a fog, and um, it all caught up to me, and it took a few years to all catch up to me before. Um, I, I just had had enough, and it was, um, it was the summer before my senior year that I went to India, and, um, before I went to India, I had been bulimic for eight months, and I was smoking cigarettes, and I was in an abusive, an emotionally abusive relationship with, with, uh, somebody who struggled with alcoholism, and, um, and when I went to India, I decided to quit smoking cold turkey. I decided, you know, I'm never going to throw up again and I'm actually going to stick to it, which like was something that I had said before, but um, there were still so many times where I was about to make myself throw up and I thought, I could die right now and I don't care. And I still went ahead and did it. So basically I was dead. My body was sick. I was getting sick a lot. Um, my, my hair was falling out. My skin was really pale. And um, I was still partying, not as much, you know, partying started to die off uh, as I progressed through college, but um, basically I, I believe it was God that, that rescued me from all of that when I went to India, and he placed people in my life that could help me get out of those horrible situations, and so I'm going to sit down. Just real quick. I was on a bike ride today, Christine and I. One of my best friends and I are biking today. This lighting is very great. Um, it's really beautiful. I decided to go back to where I was standing. It's just better lighting. You can't really see the beautiful view. I'll take you for a tour. See so if you can see me and the waters. This is the Broad Bay. It's beautiful here. Just went swimming mid bike ride, we're doing a 12 mile ride, six miles there and back, anyway, back to the better lighting, there we go, that's better, um, so anyway, um, when I was in India, I got really sick, I was studying abroad, I got really sick, and had to deal with the consequences of smoking and being bulimic, and, uh, I had all these health issues, and, um, life just, I was at rock bottom basically, and um, I started getting nudges from God. Um, well, actually, that's not true. Um, I wasn't really thinking about God at all. I was just thinking about myself and how sick I was and how much I wanted to be skinny, but I, I couldn't lose the weight, and um, I did end up losing much weight in India. Um, I lost like 20 pounds or something. I was like back down to almost the smallest I'd ever been, and I was like happy about it, but I had been so sick that it was just fake, you know, I, I was like a Pharisee in the Bible, I looked good on the outside, but I was so sick on the inside, and um, it took 
a long time uh, to recover from that. And um, I, I continued to be sick when I returned back to the States through my senior year of college, which I only did one semester of classes in the fall, and then I was technically graduated, but I stuck around to be on club boards for second semester. And all, all that, that year, senior year, from uh, fall 2013 through, through 2014, I was just recovering. I wasn't doing a lot. I was um, staying inside. And um, I remember distinctly it was um, December 2013 or January 2014. I was in the kitchen of the apartment I was living in in Keene, New Hampshire. And one of my roommates came home from class. And she started talking about the Ken Ham Bill Nye debate and was talking about Christians and how stupid they they are and um, how, you know, Bill and I clearly massacred Ken Ham in the debate and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, all of a sudden there was just something inside of me that it was like a fire started inside of me and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, why are you having beef against Christians? Like, why can't they believe what they want? And she kind of looked at me like I was a complete alien was just like wait like are you saying that you believe in God and I was like yes yes I do and it was at that moment where all of a sudden like I was I just realized like wait a minute yes I do believe in God and how come I haven't been living like it how come I haven't going to church you know what's happened to me and I started to take a deep look at myself and I started to watch Christian documentaries and I started to, um, you know, just research and dig. And um, over a f the course of a few months, um, I was building my faith again. I went to church, um, not consistently, but it was just slowly over time. I did more and more. And, um, and then it was... Um, a year later, after I graduated, a year later, I went down to Virginia and visited my cousin. And my aunt and uncle and cousins are strong Christians. They walk the talk. Um, and they, they, they live by the Bible. And I went to their house. And um, my, my uncle just started asking me all these questions like, Who is Jesus? And do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? And, you know, all, the, all, these, all these questions. And he was making me answer he wasn't making the answer but when I answered I was I was um, I was expressing these truths with my own mouth with my lips I was saying these things and as I was saying them I just started crying and I I just broke down and um, became aware of my my real identity who I am as a sinner as a, a child of God and as somebody who needs Jesus Oops my mom. I'm going to ignore that. Sorry, mom, I'll call you. Um, and so then my aunt and uncle laid their hands on me and prayed with me. And um, I just started praying to God and I felt like I could finally enter his presence. And I, I repented of my sins. I confessed my sins and repented of them. Of, and I repented of them and I asked for forgiveness. And from then on, I realized that the most important thing in my life was to get to know who God was. And there was so much that I didn't know. And I didn't know the Bible. And um, I had been living my life all wrong, and I felt convicted. Um, I felt guilty of the relationships that I had seeked out in college and in high school, and the things that I had done, and um, the partying that I did, and the example I was setting for my family, for my little brother and sister, and just for how selfish I was. And I realized how bad I needed to change, and I realized that I needed a savior who had died for me so that I could overcome these sins. And um, my whole life changed that, that June. That was just over two years ago, and I haven't stopped craving the Bible and the Word since. And I've just been sticking to the truth. And, um, and then a few months later, well, actually, it was, it was, yeah, it was six months later, I went down to Virginia again. And I stayed with my cousin again and realized I needed to be around Christians in Virginia. Um, just all these families that I met that were uh, living their lives by the Bible. And um, I've been there, I've been here ever since. Well, 
it was a couple months after that, after visiting my cousin when I actually moved down here. But I've been here for over a year and a half and I've just been growing and becoming better, a better version of myself every single day, thanks to the Lord. And so, um, why did I start making YouTube videos? Um, because I just want to share my journey with you. I want to share how my perspective has changed. I want to share with you how I believe that Jesus is the only way, um, that the Bible is the only truth, and um, that we, we all need God, and He's here for us, and we're not supposed to uh, live this life alone. We're not supposed to try and figure these things out on our own, um, but it's already been laid out for us. It's already been uh, decided for us who we are and what we're doing here, and there is a purpose to this life, and we're not just supposed to go willy-nilly, and we all have a something inside of us, you know, pointing us to God, knowing that there's a creator for all this beautiful creation all around us, and um, that's a beautiful, beautiful gift, and I've been so fortunate uh, for God to have opened my eyes, and that he hasn't given up on me, and that he rescued me from my darkest, hardest time in my life, and um, I went through all those trials, and I'm so much better off because of them, and I just want to help other people that have similar struggles with um, addictions and drug use and uh, broken relationships, and I'm here to tell you that there is a healer, there is a great counselor, there is a, a physician, um, and his, his name is God, and his son's name is Jesus, and they're here available to us 24-7 to heal the broken and um, anybody can be restored. It says in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, therefore a new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here, and that is who I am. I'm new creation in him, and I have a chance to, uh, to live my life through the perspective of the Bible. And um, anyway, thank you so much for watching and for being part of my journey and for tuning in on Tuesdays, and I just hope to spread the truth that I've learned and shed some light on some really important subjects, some hard subjects. And so, I hope you guys have enjoyed these videos. And thanks for thanks for watching this testimonial. And I hope you know I reach somebody and that you can relate. So, look forward to seeing you guys next week. Um, deuces. Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna go. Person now.